Rapunzel's Story Long ago, a king and queen had a baby daughter named Rapunzel. What her devoted parents didn't know was that Rapunzel's golden hair contained magical healing powers. A selfish old woman named Mother Gothel knew of the magic in Rapunzel's hair and wanted it to keep herself young. So she kidnapped the baby and raised her in a tower deep in the woods, never telling her that she was a princess. As Rapunzel's hair grew and grew, she loved gazing out the tower window at the lights that floated in the night sky every year on her birthday. She longed to leave the tower and see them up close, but Mother Gothel refused. Meanwhile, a young thief named Flynn Ryder had stolen something special from the king's castle and the royal guards were after him. Suddenly, he saw the perfect hiding place, a tower. When Flynn Ryder climbed into the tower, Rapunzel knocked him out with a frying pan. Then, she secretly inspected the satchel he carried. Inside, Rapunzel found a sparkling gold object. It was so familiar. Flynn Rider awoke and found himself tied to a chair with Rapunzel's long golden hair. Rapunzel pointed to her painting of the floating lights. Tomorrow was her 18th birthday. If Flynn took her to see the lights, she'd return his satchel. After Flynn agreed to help, Rapunzel used her hair to climb down from the tower. She'd never been outside before, but when her feet touched the grass, Rapunzel nearly burst with excitement, exclaiming, Woohoo! Rapunzel and Flynn enjoyed their adventure, but they were being chased. Mother Gothel was looking for them. The royal guards were after Flynn, and so were his angry partners in crime. They wanted the crown. Days passed, and the royal guards were after Flynn, and so were his angry partners in crime. They wanted the crown. Days passed, and Rapunzel and Flynn managed to escape their pursuers. One morning, Rapunzel saw a breathtaking sight a beautiful kingdom with a castle sitting high above. She headed straight to it. In the town, Rapunzel was drawn to a painting of the king, the queen, and their baby, who was known as the Lost Princess. The child had golden hair and green eyes, just like her. Flynn rode Rapunzel out to view the floating lights, which were actually lanterns. Flynn gave Rapunzel her own lantern to send into the night, and she returned the crown. Then the couple gazed into each other's eyes. They were falling in love. 
Later, Flynn and Rapunzel were separated. Mother Gothel told Rapunzel that Flynn had only wanted the crown. But she realized Mother Gothel was lying. Rapunzel now knew that she was the lost princess. Suddenly, Flynn arrived to rescue Rapunzel. But Mother Gothel hurt him badly. She wanted Rapunzel to stay with her forever. If she did, she'd allow Rapunzel to heal Flynn. But before Rapunzel could act, Flynn cut off her hair, which lost its magic. Without the magic, Mother Gothel quickly aged and turned to dust. Rapunzel was now free, but Flynn was dying. You were my new dream, he whispered. One of Rapunzel's tears fell on Flynn and began to glow and healed him. Flynn brought Rapunzel back to the castle. The king and queen rushed to embrace their lost princess. That night, the entire kingdom celebrated her return by launching hundreds of lanterns, the lights that had guided her home. The End Belle's Story Once upon a time, an enchantress turned a handsome prince into a terrible beast when she discovered his selfishness. She left behind an enchanted rose. If the prince did not find true love before the last rose petal fell, he would remain a beast forever. In a village nearby, Belle lived with her father. More than anything, Belle wanted an adventure like those she read about in her beloved books. Gaston wanted to marry Belle. Gaston wanted to marry Belle, but she refused. Belle thought he was a beastly boar, and Gaston didn't understand why she was always reading. It's not right for a woman to read, he said. Belle's father, Maurice, was an inventor. His latest invention was an automatic wood chopper, which he was taking to a contest at the county fair. You'll win first prize, Belle declared. On his way to the fair, Maurice got lost in the woods. A pack of wolves chased him to the gates of a nearby castle. Not sure what he would find inside, Maurice entered the castle grounds cautiously. Maurice could never have imagined the hideous beast that confronted him. Thinking Maurice had come to stare at him, the beast was furious. Without mercy, he locked this unwanted visitor in the dungeon. When her father's horse came home alone, Belle went in search of her father and found him locked up. Belle begged the beast for Maurice's freedom. Take me instead, she offered. The beast agreed, making her promise to stay in the castle forever. On her first night, Belle met the castle servants. The spell cast by the enchantress had turned them into enchanted objects. They were funny, friendly, and treated Belle like a special guest. At dinner time, Belle refused the beast's invitation to join him, which made him roar with frustration. 
He was anxious to end the spell and felt Belle was a sign of hope. Mrs. Potts, the teapot, and Lumiere, the candelabrum, told him to be patient and above all, kind. Later that night, Belle came upon the magic rose the Enchantress had left behind. As Belle reached out to touch it, the beast appeared and grabbed the precious rose. Get out! he yelled. Belle fled the castle on her horse, but was attacked by the same wolves that had chased her father. Risking his life, the beast saved Belle. In the days that followed, Belle began to see the goodness in the beast. One evening, the beast again invited Belle to dinner. This time, she accepted. After dinner, the beast asked Belle to dance. As they whirled around the ballroom, the beast realized he was in love with Belle. Because of his love, the beast let Belle return home to see her father. When Gaston heard her speak fondly of the beast, he grew jealous and stormed the castle. Gaston stabbed the beast and then was accidentally knocked off the roof. Belle pulled the beast to safety. Please, don't leave me, she sobbed. I love you. As she spoke, the last rose petal fell. Then, a shower of sparks filled the air. The beast began to transform. Into a handsome prince! The enchanted objects were filled with joy as they too turned back into humans and watched their prince and Belle fall in love anew. The End Pocahontas' Story Pocahontas and her friend Nakoma spent many hours exploring together. Floating down the river in their canoe, they were in awe of the untouched beauty around them. Pocahontas would even leap from the peak of a tall waterfall. The princess was a free spirit, always on the lookout for adventure. Whenever she found herself troubled, Pocahontas would consult a mystical tree named Grandmother Willow. All around you are spirits, child, the wise tree would say. They live in the earth, the water, the sky. If you listen, they will guide you. While Pocahontas gazed out over the tops of trees, she saw billowing white clouds. But these clouds were unlike any she had seen before. They were actually the sails of a large wooden ship. Pocahontas watched from afar as the ship, with its many strangers, came to shore. Oh, 
The men aboard were settlers on a hunt for gold, and they believed that they could claim this new land for themselves. But one of the men, John Smith, seemed kind and gentle. Pocahontas followed him through the forest until he suddenly spotted her. Though she knew she should be cautious of strangers, Pocahontas stepped forward. And as the two came together, a magical breeze swirled around them. They could suddenly understand each other's language. Even though they were very different, Pocahontas and John became friends. While exploring, Pocahontas showed him what Grandmother Willow had taught her. Things in nature are connected. They are all one. When Pocahontas introduced John to Grandmother Willow, he was very surprised. But the Great Spirit told Pocahontas that John had a good soul. He was a man she could trust. However, tensions were building between Pocahontas' tribe and the settlers from John's ship. Neither group trusted the other. Pocahontas tried to encourage her father to talk to the strangers, but the chief wouldn't listen. One night, John met Pocahontas in Grandmother Willow's Glade. He wanted to protect Pocahontas and her people. The two kissed. They had fallen in love. But as they embraced, warriors from Pocahontas' tribe arrived and captured John. Pocahontas visited him later in secret. No matter what happens, John Smith said, I'll always be with you, forever. The next day, as the tribe prepared for war with the settlers, Pocahontas bravely stepped forward to tell her father that she loved John Smith. Hurting John would only mean more war. The chief listened to his daughter and freed John instead. But John was injured. He had to return home. Pocahontas wanted to go with him, but she knew that her tribe needed her. Always be with you, forever, Pocahontas said as she kissed him goodbye. The End <laughs>